I'm going to talk about cameras next real quick. Um, in large part, you need more cinematic cameras. And the reason for that is if we look here, right now I haven't done anything with this character. I can give him a basic car controller and a basic plane controller. Oops, well, this is not the right scene, so let me do this. This is the cutscene. So if I do this and I hit up, it makes me accelerate, right makes me turn to the right, I can do donuts. Slows down automatically. Back up. Go over here, line ourselves up, fly. That goes a lot faster, but it's absolutely terrible at turning. Okay, so that's that. Um, and basically what's the case here is um, our camera always follows the player. Now that might be okay in game, but if you're talking about in a cutscene, you may want the camera to do something else, something, you know, radical for the time being. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to delete this camera. I'm going to go ahead and add a, um, let's call it a uh, remote transform 2D. And this is a normal thing that just, a normal node that comes with Godot because Godot is amazing. I'll go into my cutscene base add my camera 2d here make it current and this at this point i'm just replacing functionality so i don't love to do this but if you do editable children you can then come into here and set it like that usually what i'll do is i'll put a, a setter on my player for the camera and it will just set it at the top script but for the our purposes this is fine now this should get us exactly the same functionality. Uh, the only difference is I don't have that set. So if we just check that out, it should be exactly the same. This is a good trick to remember because of things like um, platformers. If you go falling off a platform, uh, you can cue free the player. And when you do, the remote transform will stop transmitting its coordinates to the camera so the camera will remain in the last place that it was before the player died so in other words the camera doesn't just go shooting off the side of the screen okay and now the reason we want to do that is this what we actually are going to do with our camera is make it sort of cool we're going to give it a tween this tween is going to be used in here for movement. So we're going to give this a script. And this is relevant to um, scripts. Sorry, this is relevant to cutscenes because you'll often want to say target a position, target a node, target, um, you know, something that's flying across the screen. There's a number of reasons why you'd want to use a tween to move your camera around instead of the remote transform. So let's go ahead and take a look and add our script here. We're going to call this cutscene camera. And I believe this is in cutscenes already. The first thing we'll do here is on ready for our tween equals Oops. tween. Okay. Now, there's something a little funny here. What we can do, we can just kind of stub out some functions. Say func move to position. Losing it for a second here. Pause vector two. Um, we could put in a time to return, but I think what we'll do is we'll just store the original position.
Okay. So what we want to do here, when we say move to position, we want it to zoom to position or pause here. Or I have it. We'll call it target pause. We want it to zoom to the target pause. And then for the time being, we just want it to stay there. Um, one thing that we can do with cameras, by the way, to make them look cooler is we can enable smoothing. It will make it go a lot, uh, well, smoother, as the name might imply. Drag and margin is not quite the same thing. Um, what you actually want is smoothing and the speed it will be basically how slowly it, or quickly it speeds up to catch up to the position that you've moved it to. So if you move it, you know, 100 meters to the right, it will start off very, very quickly and, but reach sort of a maximum speed and then slow down as it gets there. Um, let me show you approximately how that actually works. So if we're doing move to position, we store our original position before we do a move. Now, what we want to do is we want to say tween dot interpolate property. And we say self, because that's what we're doing. Node path. The initial value is Then we do original pause, oh, sorry, then we just do target pause because this one is coming from uh, just somewhere. They, they must know the position already. Um, target pause. Duration, we should probably also do a speed here. Now the speed should be how fast this goes. So if we reason this out, this is our time. Speed is, uh, this is meters per second divided by five. Okay, so we need to, all right. So what we actually need to do, let's do it this way. We'll do, That should be about right. Um, I'm not going to set any of the remaining properties, just so you can remember. They are how it transitions, as well as uh, let me get this out of here. The ease type. In this case, it'll take the defaults, which is really all I want. I don't want there to be a delay, so I'm not going to put one. And uh, we can actually test this out. Let's. Uh, Go ahead and attach a script here just for the sake of argument. I'll do funk ready. So we know we can interact with the camera here. We'll say uh, one thing I forgot to do was actually say. We just say cam dot move to position, and if we say cam dot global position plus uh, let's say vector two dot right times uh, let's say hundred meters like we said before, and make this closer to something like what we would do with a normal run. So if we want to do like uh, say two fifty. Should go pretty quick. And we're stopped. So 100, as it turns out, not that far. Okay. And what we can do here is actually 
we can do a little trick here. This is all going to go into our cutscene, so might as well do it now. Yield tween, tween all completed. The reason we do that, or is it finished? I always forget. Tween all completed. Okay, I was right for once. Uh, we can do this. We can say yield this completed and now it'll wait until this is done before continuing so we can say yield uh, get tree create timer let's say we'll wait here for two seconds and then we'll say yield So this return to old position, let's just implement that real quick. We'll just say the exact same thing, only we swap the properties. Let's do that. Ah, I forget to yield in it. So if you ever get this error, first argument of yield is not a type of object. That means you forgot to actually yield in it because when you yield, it returns a type. It returns the um, type that is for yielding, basically. It's uh, sort of like a. Oh, hey, no camera. <laughs> um, Basically, it tells you information about the current state of it, so it's a coroutine, essentially. And then what we can do um, for our cutscene, which is kind of nice here, this stuff is not going to be used here um, in your game. You would want this to be somewhere else. You can do a lot of different ways of handling this. I'll go over a couple of them, but um, this is just one way to do it, is moving it manually and sort of handling stuff by hand. This you would only really want to use for simpler things. Um, camera might like zoom in on a bad guy and then zoom back uh, and say like you have to find that bad guy. Uh, but yeah, so there are a few things though that for complicated ones that wouldn't make sense. And I'll show you why that's the case here shortly. Uh, let me just do this real quick. There we go. Okay. All right. So we're part of the way there to good cutscenes. Tune in next time where I discuss how to bypass controls so that you can use the same scenes between cutscenes and the actual game.